Welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill. I'm the pastor of Providence Presbyterian Church. We are located in Evansville, Indiana. We are a congregation of the Presbyterian Church in America. It's great to have you here uh, with me for a Tuesday, October 11th, 2022. This is edition number seven of season six of the Morning Devotional. We are working our way uh, through the book of Exodus. Today we come to Exodus chapter 7. Let's pray first, and then we'll take a look at this chapter together. Our God in heaven, as we come to you again at the start of a new day, we come with um, humble expectation that your word will minister to our hearts and our minds. We thank you for giving us your word. We know that it is that which is inspired of your spirit. It was written by him to instruct and guide your people, to bring comfort and help and conviction of sin where needed. We pray that you would forgive us for our sins, our transgressions, our sins of omission and commission, that you would grant to us that which you've promised to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We again ask that your spirit would teach us as we look at these things, knowing that they were given to us to help us, to instruct us. And so may you do that. Even now we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we come now to Exodus chapter 7. We have um, seen uh, some events that have taken place as Moses is commissioned of the Lord, uh, uh, set apart by him to redeem his people. He, a type of Christ as mediator uh, between the people and Pharaoh, uh, the king of Egypt. Uh, In chapter 5, we noted how Uh, There was great burdens heaped upon the people as a result of uh, Moses' words to Pharaoh. And Moses uh, turns to the Lord in verse 22, Why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? And and I made the argument that uh, I think he's asking honest questions. He's sincerely uh, struggling with these things, uh, expecting probably that God would deliver the people immediately upon the first encounter that he had with Pharaoh. In chapter 6, God comforts Moses with words and promises of deliverance. And we come now to chapter 7, and we see a continuation of this encouragement that God gives to Moses and Aaron before uh, they go in and begin what is really uh, ten signs um, given of the Lord against um, the false gods and idols of Egypt. Now, your Bible may refer to these as plagues, uh, and that's fine, uh, but I would prefer to see them labeled as signs because they are signs of God's redeeming work. They're the signs of God's power and His almighty uh, and sovereign direction uh, to, to redeem a people. And 10 of them will occur, and we will go through those as they come in our study. But in the beginning of the chapter, Moses is again encouraged by the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and your brother Aaron shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of this land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you. Now let's just pause there and consider uh, what I've already just said. Uh, There, the reference to the signs are given in verse 3. And so in verse 4, Pharaoh will not listen to you, then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring my host, my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great acts of judgment. Now these acts of judgment are against Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, against his hardness of heart, against his unwillingness to let the people go. But they're also a judgment against the false gods of uh, Egypt as well. Verse 5, the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out the people of Israel from among them. Moses and Aaron did so. They did just as the Lord commanded them. Now Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. Now we do have here a, a sign, really words of comfort. Notice again how Jehovah himself makes these declarations. I will harden Pharaoh's heart. I will multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring my hosts, my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt. 
Um, I will stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out the people. Repeatedly throughout these first seven verses, God again makes it very plain to, to Moses what he plans to do. Now, one of the things that we must always remember as we journey in our Christian experience, and though we may never be called to stand before kings in this way, we must always recall the things that God has declared, the things that God has said he would do. And he, a God who cannot lie, he is not like us, uh, he is not fickle, his promises are yes and amen in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will accomplish all that he determines to accomplish in our lives. The, the, the role we play in this is to simply trust him, to believe him for these things. Now, Moses and Aaron clearly believed because at the end of the section, they go in uh, to, um, to speak <clears throat> with, with Pharaoh. And we, too, demonstrate our trust in the Lord by obeying that which he has said. To trust in the Lord with all of our heart, lean not on our own understanding, and all of our ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our paths. And so they go in, verse 8, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Prove yourselves by working a miracle, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your staff and cast it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron cast down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a serpent. Now here, of course, the, an act of God is displayed before Pharaoh and his magicians, and they, of course, in turn, as the text clearly tells us, they uh, do very much the same. But as we leave this section, verse 13, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He would not listen to them as the Lord had said. Now, oftentimes, as we read Scripture, as we hear the preaching of the Word, um, we must heed the things that the Lord says. We must hear Him, and we must respond. We must not harden our hearts against the things that God has said. So, as a result of this first encounter, this initial encounter with the king of Egypt, the beginning of a, a long series of, of signs are going to be given uh, to Moses to give to uh, display the power of God, and this will continue uh, all the way through uh, chapter 12 of Exodus. And so that first sign is the water turning into blood. The Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refused to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he is going out to the water. Stand on the bank of the Nile to meet him, and take in your hand the staff that turned into a serpent. Now, this staff, of course, is going to be very, uh, very um, prominent uh, throughout these signs. Uh, it's a prominent symbol that Moses carries with him. And he is told to say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But so far you have not obeyed. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, with the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it shall turn into blood. And so, as one commentator puts it, this statement, By this you shall know that I am the Lord, this statement and the others like it that we will see as we go through this section are most often spoken <clears throat> to Pharaoh in Egypt, and it first appears in Exodus where the Lord is speaking to Moses about Israel in chapter 6. And so the first sign is the water turning into blood, um, and Moses and Aaron obey the command that which they did what they were commanded, and he lifted up his staff, verse 20, and struck the water in the Nile, and all the water in the Nile turned into blood. The fish in the Nile died, the, nails, the Nile stank, and the Egyptians could not drink water from it. There was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. But again, as we noted in the first encounter, the magicians of Egypt were able to do the same, but yet Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he would not listen uh, to uh, the Lord. And so, as one commentator puts it, this section of the first sign of the first plague of water to blood after separate instances in which Moses and Aaron made the initial request to let Israel go and perform the first sign of the Lord's power, the Lord now instructs them to warn Pharaoh that his failure to let Israel go will result in a sign that bears not only the evidence of the Lord's power, but also the physical effects of the Lord's judgment 
on Egypt. And so it was a significant judgment because the Nile was a very much a source of respite. It was a source of, uh, of needed refreshment. The water that, that, uh, that uh, the, the, the people of Egypt depended upon came from the Nile. And this was then, therefore, a great act of judgment against, um, against the people of Israel, but against Pharaoh uh, himself. And so, as a result, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He does not listen. Seven full days passed, pass after the Lord had struck uh, the Nile. And so this sets the stage, of course, for the second sign that we will take up uh, tomorrow. But today, uh, it is important to realize uh, the promises of God that are given to his people and also recognize the power of God as he works to free a people, as he works to deliver his people. And he is doing that even today as he seeks to bring his church uh, to that heavenly rest. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. I hope they are. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave me a note. The way to contact me is there before before you on the screen. And so until the Wednesday edition, when we consider uh, chapter 8 and the second, third, and fourth sign delivered against the people of Egypt and against Pharaoh specifically, may the Lord help you today. May you trust him. May you trust his promises. And may he guide and direct your life. God bless.